So, yesterday, the California recall, um, if you will, well, not yesterday, but Tuesday, the California recall came to a close. Well, the 14th was basically the day for recall election to see whether or not Newsom would go. And yesterday pretty much confirmed what a lot of people that kind of ran that campaign to get, you know, get him recalled or anything. I adjust the camera there for a second. You know, try to, uh, you know, like I said, try to get him recalled, kind of feared, and that is the fact that he is going to remain. Now, the silver lining is he still has to keep campaigning to kind of get another term uh, during uh, uh, the 2022 election, which, you know, is going to affect all of the country because it's not just, you know, his governmentship that's on the line or governorship that's on the line, but it's every state. Uh, the, you know, governorship that's on the line as well. Every state, every 50 state across the board, as far as I know, along with um, state senates, state houses, as well as in Washington, the Congress and the House of Representatives, a lot of those seats are up for grabs with the projection uh, from that uh, perspective, from, well, basically with the projection, I should say, from the perspective of a lot of people that the Republicans are going to basically take a majority of those seats uh, next year. But the question obviously is why would anybody want to recall a governor or even a mayor, you know, for that matter, uh, from the position of power? A position of power they were, as some would say, fairly uh, elected, uh, voted into. And mainly the reason the recall, at least here, happened in California is because of the fact that there's a lot of folks and even some, you know, GOP-wise here in the state that felt that basically Newsom didn't, has not lived up to his role as governor. And that the only reason, one of the primary reasons they feel he was elected is because he's young. You see, a lot of us folks, and this is hard to say, but a lot of us folks have this mindset that if we vote younger, that person's going to understand us better. Like, they're going to understand what we want more so than, let's say, the previous administration uh, did uh, prior to them coming in. So that's why we keep, you know, going in that directive of, of direction, I should say, of, you know, voting younger or voting for someone that at least has a better understanding of the current generation or the previous generation known as Generation X. So that's why, you know, we go with the younger candidates at times, even though we should know better based on reputation that we've heard from others that it may not be the best uh, decision to go with, which is why, you know, a lot of us still go with it because it's, it's not a fact of, oh, well, you know, we should consider the experience this person has. No, it's about, oh, look how young that guy or gal is that's running for governor or running for mayor or, or even running for president or vice president. I want to go with that person because they, they're young and they have a better understanding of what we're about or well our parents generation was about and stuff like that you know that's why we go this route that's why we vote for people like a Newsom into office because of age and age shouldn't be a factor in many cases what should be a factor is the experience and the knowledge that they bring to the table now when it comes to let's say someone like Biden yeah age has pretty much played a factor in a lot of people not liking the guy, even his own, even members of, the, members of his own um, administration and Democratical Party have felt the same way because they feel that he's not, you know, all there and that he was only voted in as basically uh, a cover-up, basically as a, uh, I guess you could say a duplicate, uh, uh, I wouldn't say duplicate, uh, a doppelganger, if you will, for the person that was really put in charge, and that's Kamala Harris. I mean, how many times have we heard, you know, many people, you know, throughout the news sites like Fox News and New, Newsmax and OAN, One American Network, and all of them, how many times, and even some of the national networks as well, how many times have we heard members in those areas of those news teams, uh, the correspondents and, you know, uh, reporters and all that, um, how many times have we heard some of them come out and say that they feel that the only reason Biden was put in was as a cover-up, was as a, as a, basically a doppelganger, a red herring for who the real person being put in charge is, and that's Harris. How many times have we heard that? A lot. Which is why 
you know, a lot of people are looking at the fact that next year, if projected that the Republicans get the House and the Congress, that the first step they're going to do is try to get, you know, Biden out of office and potentially Harris out of office, and maybe even to an extent Pelosi away from that position as well because of, you know, the uh, chain of command and how that goes, as well as maybe try to find a way to, you know, put in a ruling, an act, or something that gets Trump and Pence back into power. But we still, but the thing is, we have to wait until at least next year to see whether or not that comes to, uh, comes to pass, if you will. Now, now here's the thing. Here's the thing, though, as far as the recall is concerned, you know, we don't see that many recalls ever happen. But when they do, it definitely sends a message, not just to the current person in charge, but it sends a message uh, across the board to all of the country, if not all of the world, that hey, if you don't want this to happen to your leader, you let your leader know that they need to get their act together. They need to stand by what they said they were going to stand by when you elected them into office. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what a recall is. You know, it's to send a message to other, you know, governors, mayors, you know, other, you know, county or regional leaders across the board, you know, not just here in the states, but, you know, as well as around the world, that if they don't want to see this happen, you know, to their people that they voted in, then that person needs to start getting their act together. And by seeing what's happening to, let's say, Newsom, or what have happened to Newsom, hopefully that sent a message of, hey, you might be voted, they might have voted you in, but if you don't want them to do the same thing that we almost did to him, you need to get your act together. The other thing that I talked about as well in a video I did yesterday on this was the fact that I think what this did was scare Newsom. It scared him to an extent to where now he realizes, hopefully, by the grace of God, he hope, hopefully he realizes that he can't do uh, what he did before. He can't go back and being the governor he once before was before when he got voted in. He has to be a governor that he said he was. He promised he was going to be when he was campaigning. He has to finally be that governor. He has to be the governor that suddenly has decided to come out, you know, and be what he promised to be in the past few weeks to save his job. That's the governor he needs to be. That's the governor he needs to be. And what a recall does for a governor, for a mayor, you know, if you will, if any, you know, or any person in a similar position of power. What it does is it scares them that even if they remain, they act, it wakes them up and makes them realize, okay, I don't want to go through that again. Let me do what I should have done a long time ago and be the way, be what I promised I was going to be. And hopefully that happens. Now, does, you know, does this mean he's going to have a clear path to being reelected in 2022? And, you know, according to reports, Democrats, you know, Democrats here, uh, in uh, California that are part of his administration, part of his, you know, political team, uh, uh, his campaign team, that is, I should say, you know, they feel he has a good chance of staying in. But, but, you know, that's a, you know, that's basically a, you know, week by week, month by month uh, situation because things can change. Things can and will change. You cannot tell me that the election uh, next year the election next year, if not this year, I don't know if we have, I think we have one this year, I gotta check again. But whatever election, again, the one that's for the state government ships across the board, you know, the, the Congress and the House, all that, you know, within the next year or so, there's gonna be a lot more coming out. There's gonna be a lot more people arriving onto the scene. Larry Elder may have conceded, but he's gonna be back. You know, Caitlyn, Caitlyn Jenner, despite how you feel about her, it, whatever, uh, no offense when I say that, depending on how you f feel about her, you know, she'll be back. People that represent the Green Party and the Independent Party, they'll be back. A lot of people are going to be back and more so are going to be back, are going to be entry, throwing their names into the hat as well. Because they're not going to want to have to deal with another two years, three years of Newsom in office. And they also basically know that the only reason Newsom is in office and is now saying and doing the things that he should have done a long time ago, you know, so that this wouldn't be happening, 
they know that the other real reason he's doing all this is because he's prepping himself. All the state governors out there are prepping themselves, you know, for one thing and one thing only. It's not just another term as governor, but they're prepping themselves for 2024. And I sense that is what Newsom is doing. If Newsom would have been recalled, that preparation would have gone out the window and he wouldn't be doing, he wouldn't be, you know, prepping himself for anything. But because he has a lot of Democrats on his side, and this is mainly a majority-wise a Democratic state, you know, he basically now has the opportunity to start anew, you know, be the governor he promised to be, you know, in the first place when he was campaigning, and then when he campaigns again, you know, try to keep that promise this time around. Basically, long story short, at the same time, whether he stays in office or he doesn't, after, tw after next year's election, whether he stays in office or he doesn't, he's going to be prepping himself for a presidential campaign run. You, I know it. Anybody watching this knows it. And anybody watching it from other states, they know it because they see it with their governors. They see it. I mean, people in Michigan, they see it with their governor. People in Nevada see it with their governor. People in New York see it with their governor. Well, the former governor basically who had stepped down and resigned due to controversy, you can forget him. But the governor that stepped in and is going to try to run again to remain in that position, you know she's going to go for it. You know the governor in Florida is going to go for it. You know the governor in Texas is going to go for it. Every governor that has been pretty much featured, you know, because of their decision makings uh, throughout this pandemic and everything, that have either remained in power or basically has been looked, at, looked, at, uh, looked upon as being controversial in their decisions, despite what's going on, those men and women are going to be running for president. We all know it. We all know it. And this recall, had it gone through and was successful, Newsom, like Como, wouldn't be in the conversation. But because he survived you know, the recall, he's in the conversation. So when he's prepping and campaigning to keep his seat as governor next year, you know, here in California, he's also going to slowly be prepping himself to run for president. But to get back on topic, again, he should be thankful that the recall went in his favor because basically, if it didn't, those aspirations would be out the door. But because it went in his favor, he survived it, you know, one, he realizes that if he doesn't want to go through that again, he's got to be what he promised to be originally. I mean, the action he's been taking over the past several months since the recall really started to take a lot of, you know, really started to gain momentum and really get his attention finally, you know, basically he's realized that if he doesn't want to go through this again, he's got to be the, pres uh, the governor he promised he would be when he first campaigned. The same thing with any other governor that might be facing a similar situation. If they don't want to get any controversy thrown their way, they don't want any potential recall to happen, especially seeing a possible recall happen for the second time in this state, they're going to want to have to change course and be like, you know what, I'm going to be the governor I promised I should be so I could save my job and potentially keep, still keep it after the 2022 election. That's basically what this recall did. The re that's basically what the recall did and basically what the recall also was. It was basically, you know, in the end, the recall was, because I know I got off track a little bit here, the recall was a way to basically showcase the dissatisfaction of a lot of folks, not just political-wise, but, you know, citizen-wise, at the job the governor was doing. But because of the fact that we live in a democratic state, he survived. And I would assume he survived barely, despite what the headlines would say. But yeah, that's what a recall was, and to me, that's what the recall did. It scared Newsom into finally being what he promised he would be. And hopefully, it scared the other governors, Republican or Democrat, into being what they promised to be across the board here in the U.S. But that's what the recall was, well, that's what the recall was, and that's what, well, basically what I'm trying to say is, that's what the recall is about, was about, and what it did in the end. But let me know what you guys think. Comment down below, live chat during the premiere, like the video, check out the Teespring store. But what did you think about the recall overall? Do you think it sent a message of, hey, you don't want this to happen again? 
then be what you promised to be and be a true leader, act responsibly. What are your thoughts? Comment down below, like the video, live chat during the premiere, and I know.